Hello, my name is Dr. Elena Denosa brown and I'm an assistant professor in the Occupational Therapy Department at Duquesne University. I've been teaching online for five years and wanted to share with you a little bit about what that experience looks like. Online teaching and learning presents instructors and students with extensive opportunities to be creative, flexible, and connected. I always open my online courses by letting my students know the best ways to contact me, which include email, a question and answer discussion board, and online office hours. During synchronous Zoom meetings, I arrive early to check in with students and hang around at the end in case anyone wants to speak with me. Through these mechanisms, I am able to connect with students who have questions and reach out to students who may find this way of learning new and need additional support. One might wonder how do students connect with each other in this space? I found that this happens in two ways. One is through learning activities designed by the instructor, which fosters student-to-student -student interaction. Whether this is completing a case-based learning activity in a Zoom breakout room, an asynchronous discussion prompt around a reading, or working in a group project with each other outside of class time. Students will be engaged in valuable learning opportunities with their peers that will foster community. The second way I've observed is through the creation of a social media resource, typically initiated by students. My students have used Facebook and group texts. Through these mechanisms, peers support each other through the process of the course and build relationships. One of my favorite classes was a synchronous session where I used a collaborative learning technique called a jigsaw to discuss evaluation in telehealth for occupational therapists. The topic was prompted in part by the situation that is currently facing many healthcare providers who are now increasing online services to clients. Students had been assigned one of four readings to complete prior to class. When they arrived to the Zoom meeting, after an overview, they were placed in a breakout room with students who had read the same article. They processed this article together and generated a summary. Then, with that summary, they were placed in a new small group with students who hadn't read their article. In this new small group, they learned with and from each other about the assessments used in each article and overall what worked well and what didn't in telehealth for evaluation. We processed all of this as a large group at the end to ensure that everyone was on the same page. By the end of class, it was clear that students were able to speak to key content regarding topics based in the literature and had gained a sense of authorship in the learning process. I also think they had some fun at the same time. Here at Duquesne, faculty have a variety of tools and resources like the Center for Teaching Excellence, Educational Technology, and even a course called Foundations in Online Learning to support the creation of engaging online courses that are structured to meet student learning needs. These resources, plus the dedication of faculty, create high quality educational opportunities in the online space. Thank you for letting me share my experiences with you. I would like to close with a mantra that had been part of our shared campus experience during this challenging time. Be patient, be kind, be brave, and have faith. Thank you so much.